Today, I'm incredibly pleased to be announcing an announcement, uh, an investment of over $33 million to support three modern, accessible, and environmentally friendly community infrastructure projects right here in Montreal. The first one will be the construction of the community installation of Park Extension. This will be just beside this location. There will be a gymnasium, some offices for local organization, meeting rooms, as well as a kitchen, community kitchen. I must say that it's been years into the making. We're talking about this the solution for the families in the area. It took a lot of time, a lot of work, a lot of effort to get to this point. So this vision today is what is the accomplishment of many years of work. This community center will be a place where people will gather, share their vision, and will be to the use of the resident of Park Extension. Then we will have a community house in Saint-Michel. This will be a three-floor installation for community organization for everyone in the area. And the third project, is the modernization of a, the future installation of Africa for women in Zurochi Street. So that we will actually increase the area and put on the roof, a green roof. This will be used by the women. And fairer future for everyone. We need to invest in our communities. We need to invest in our people. That's our vision. And this is what we're doing. We want to build more housing unit more quickly, having good jobs for the middle class, create more spaces in kids' daycare. We want also to make insulin free for anyone who needs it, and also as free contraceptives for women. Everything we're doing is to give a chance to every generation. We're there to move forward, to make sure that we have a future, a more solid future for everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We'll start the question period, which will last 15 minutes. One question, one follow-up, and starting with uh, Canadian Press. More for us, Canadian press. Prime Minister, uh, General Eyre had asked for his replacement to be named as soon as possible uh, to allow them several months to get up to speed. Your announcement today leaves just a matter of weeks. Why is that? Oh, listen, the transition of the, uh, the uh, Chief of Defence Staff is an extraordinarily important choice, particularly uh, in these moments of uh, complicated geopolitics and increased threats, particularly to our Arctic. That's why uh, we announced a, a very significant defence policy update just a few months ago uh, that uh, makes record investments in our military, making sure that we have the right person uh, to lead our armed forces in this pivotal time uh, was something that I think Canadians appropriately felt that we needed to take seriously, which we did. And that's why I'm so incredibly pleased uh, with uh, uh, General Carignan uh, take coming on uh, as Chief of Defence Staff. Uh, her leadership will be significant in these challenging times uh, in Canada and around the world. Okay. Uh, well, obviously, we're going through some serious geopolitical challenges throughout the world, which is why we need to have the right person, the right leaders for our Canadian Armed Forces. That we need important resources, and that is why we've made some important investments, in particular related to the protection of the Arctic. In our most recent uh, announcement of massive investments in the Canadian Forces, but we also need the right person to lead our Armed Forces. We work with General Air and with the Canadian Forces to find that right person. And therefore, I'm very, very happy to announce uh, that we are appointing uh, Lieutenant General Jenny Canillan as the next uh, Chief of the Defence Staff. On another topic, we understand you met with members of your caucus executive this week. Uh, what was your takeaway from that meeting? Listen, there are lots of conversations going on about how uh, we make sure we keep working hard to deliver for Canadians. Uh, people are facing challenging times, and that's where stepping up on things like dental care, on uh, more spaces in childcare, uh, 
more construction of housing, uh, better uh, delivery of services, including a uh, national school food program, uh, growing the economy with greater investments from around the world in uh, good green jobs and careers. These are the things uh, that we need to continue to focus on as uh, Canadians are facing challenging times right now, and we will continue to do that. Prochaine question. Good morning, Prime Minister nice. Marika Walsh with the Globe and Mail. Um, why are you refusing to meet with the National Caucus? Your MPs are calling for an urgent in-person meeting of all MPs. Why are you refusing, and do we interpret from that that you don't care what they have to say? Listen, let's, let's be very clear. Last week's uh, by-election loss, uh, not to sugarcoat it, was, was challenging. It uh, was uh, something we need to take seriously, and we've been engaged in uh, lots of important conversations. I've had uh, lots of calls with uh, different members of caucus uh, from across the country, not just in the GTA, uh, to talk about uh, how we make sure we're continuing our work connecting with Canadians to make sure we're continuing to deliver for people. Uh, there are, as always, a range of perspectives and voices within the Liberal Party, and listening to all those voices and giving them all time to engage is really, really important. And that's uh, what we've been doing, what I'm going to continue to do while we stay focused on delivering for Canadians. Uh, well, it's quite obvious that in the Liberal Caucus, as uh, everywhere, Always, there's a wide variety of perspectives. That the reality is, is that the loss of the by-election last week in Toronto St. Paul is a difficult moment. That is uh, inciting me to work even harder and to implement the uh, necessary answers to continue to deliver for our citizens, whether it be dental care. Uh, uh, national uh, food uh, school food program, new housing, uh, or investments in a, a green economy with good jobs for the future and more childcare spaces. There's uh, still a lot of work to do, and we're going to continue to do it all together. You're a liberal or conservative in Canada. Voters tend to give prime ministers or have always given prime ministers in the last hundred plus years the door after nine or ten years. Why do you think you're different? Uh, listen. There is uh, a challenge uh, faced by democracies all around the world right now. Whether we look at what's going on in France, whether we look at the uh, election in the United States, whether we look at any democracy around the world where we are seeing increasing challenges to people's uh, well-being, greater anxieties, uh, an erosion of democratic principles and rights, this is a really important time uh, for uh, governments uh, to step up and deliver concretely for citizens, to restore and encourage uh, faith in the institutions that are there, to deliver things like more childcare spaces, to deliver uh, better access to dental care for people who don't have insurance, to deliver uh, more housing with the most ambitious housing plan this country has ever seen. These are the things that we need to stay focused on, and that's exactly uh, what I'm working hard on right now. Next question, that's you, Canada, here. Your electors are asking for an emergency meeting of the caucus uh, uh, since the defeat in Toronto St. Paul. Do you commit to, to holding this meeting over the next week, yes or no? First of all, I had a meeting yesterday with the uh, caucus executive, and we talked about uh, what we could continue to do to continue delivering for Canadians and to pull the team together. And we will continue to commit in that sense. And I will continue to be committed with uh, my MPs throughout the country. Over the last week, I had a lot of conversations with various people. I will continue to do so. And I am currently listening what all members of the Congress have to say, not only those who speak to the media, but some people are asking for you to leave. You've already said that you intend to remain uh, on the job. What thinks you have the more authority to lead your troops into the next election? Well, the conversations that I'm having with liberals from uh, one end of the country to the other confirm that our priority has to be to continue to deliver for Canadians, whether it be services, uh, whether it be affordability, investments for a better future. That is what we're concentrating on, and that's what we're going to continue to concentrate on. Love at CBC. Uh, with all due respect, my two colleagues have asked the same question and they have not received a specific answer. The question is, 
will you hold a national in-person caucus uh, with your party, with the MPs? As I've said, I will continue to engage and to talk and to listen and to meet with all my MPs from across the country to talk about how uh, we can both understand uh, what we need to improve on, given last week's by-election defeat, but also how we continue to be there for Canadians in a really important moment. Uh, people are anxious in Canada and around the world, and a government needs to be stepping up to deliver for people, whether it's delivering more housing and support on rents, whether it's delivering more spaces in childcare, whether it's de delivering uh, dental care services. These are all things uh, that the Conservative Party has said uh, they will cut or eliminate. These are the things that actually matter for Canadians. These are the things that we are focused on as a team. Follow up. Um, are there, there are members of your caucus that are considering leaving if you do stay on. What's your reaction to that? And are, are you willing to stay on and lose members of your caucus? I think the conversations that I'm having with uh, MPs directly right across the country, the conversations that we're all having as Liberals uh, are going to continue and we're going to stay focused on Canadians. I can't speak to, uh, to uh, what people in the media are thinking, that's your job, but I can speak to the uh, strength and focus that all Liberals have on delivering for Canadians and that's what we're going to continue to do. Prochaine question. Next question, FTVA News. Uh, why stay there where your popularity is uh, uh, dropping and people seem to be leaning towards a plenty of government? Well, we understand that we're going through a difficult time for Canadians, difficult to the, throughout the world. Look at what's happening in France right now. We look at the elections in the United States. We uh, look at what's uh, going on in various countries in the world in terms of democracy. We know that people are going through very anxious moments, and that's why our government is uh, focusing on delivering for people, delivering health care, delivering dental care, delivering more uh, daycare spaces, uh, delivering the construction of more uh, affordable housing with the most ambitious uh, uh, housing uh, program that Canada has seen for decades. Right here in Montreal, we had uh, an increase of 200 percent in housing uh, 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 building here in Montreal this, uh, over last year. That's the work that our government's doing to help people in these uh, anxious times. And we're going to continue this work to deliver for Canadians. Aren't there a member of your team who asked you or invited you to leave? I've had some very interesting conversations, uh, direct and frank conversations uh, that uh, do uh, take into account the challenge that we're facing since we lost uh, uh, Toronto St. Paul's uh, last year, an important by election. But once again, our focus remains on Canadians and the support that we have to uh, provide them in the work we all have to do together. Next question. Vincent Larin, La Presse uh, newspaper. What are you going to do to reassure your MPs that are worried? about the results of this uh, by-election in Toronto St. Paul's. Well, first of all, the conversations that I am having, that all of us are having uh, in the, within the team about how we're going to continue to continue to deliver and uh, uh, bring people to realize uh, all the good that, that we've brought to Canadians. I don't even need to listen, but there's investments that we're doing that can deliver concretely help and assistance to Canadians in these uncertain times. Uh, we're seeing instability throughout the world in democracies, and we are there to support people, and that's what we're going to continue to do. But I'm wondering what you answer to those who ask publicly that you uh, leave. Well, there'll always be some people with different opinions. It's one of the strengths of our party. We have uh, people with a lot of different perspectives. Uh, and I can tell you that in my conversations with uh, MPs from one end of the country to the other, the accent is on how we're going to continue to be there for Canadians, how we're going to uh, present a positive vision uh, to fight against uh, this uh, mounting right-wing populism we see throughout the year, including uh, represented by Pierre Poiliev. Last question. Bonjour, Monsieur Trudeau. Uh, Mr. Trudeau, 
traverser l'océan pour vous faire réagir. I'll uh, jump over the pond to ask you what your reactions are against the first round of the uh, French elections. Are you worried about this uh, uh, rise of the right in France? Answer, I think we're seeing uh, a rise of the populist right uh, throughout the world in our democracies, and I think it's very important to be there to continue to deliver, to reassure citizens. People see that some are anxious, uh, and they're trying to amplify those anxieties, whether it be in France or elsewhere. Others offer concrete solutions. Now, it's pretty obvious that it's more difficult to, to deliver a positive message and to work to deliver uh, concrete solutions, because controversy and uh, uh, excitement uh, uh, gives rise to a lot of clicks and to headlines. But the work that we have to do in all our societies to create, or community organizations, as, as we have here, uh, and a sense of a united society where we're working uh, together to meet these big challenges and not to amplify them. That is the serious work uh, that, uh, that has to be done within democracies, and that's what we're doing here in Canada. And, uh, and unfortunately, we're seeing throughout the world, uh, but also progressive parties are doing so throughout the world, rather. Are there changes that are needed in your cabinet to increase the popularity of uh, your party? Listen, I'm listening to what all my MPs have to say, and my ministers are working very hard to deliver on our ambitious uh, program to respond to the challenges that Canadians are facing. We will carry along the same lines. It's a challenging time for Canadians, and the government has to be there with concrete solutions. That's what we're doing, whether it uh, be with dental care, investments in housing, uh, uh, daycare spaces, or investments. Uh, to create uh, uh, green jobs for the long-term future. We are there to do concrete long-term investments that will help Canadians and reassure them in this anxious time. Thank you very much, and that's it uh, for the press conference. Thank you.